raven's flock, the flock rundown is the place to be. My man Ryan has been a lifelong Ravens fan since he was born. So I'm telling you now, it's about to go down. The podcast, the flock rundown. Ravens, baby. Nothing gets better than waking up and wondering how high we can fly. Tune in. Motionless brainwaves attempt to swim their way to sense can't tame the untamed. Appreciate you, Ray. What's up, Ravens fans? My name is Ryan, and welcome back to another episode of The Flock Rundown. Feels good to be back. Haven't been making quite as many videos since the end of the season, but we're back with some Ravens news. They have officially re-signed or extended Nelson Aguilar to a one-year deal. And that comes on the deadline, basically. Today is the deadline for a few guys. Kevin Zeitler, Gus Edwards, Nelson Aguilar, Rocky Asin, and Geno Stone all have a deadline to where if they aren't re-signed by today, their dead cap will take in effect. So therefore... The void years that were originally put onto their deal carry dead cap money, and that goes into effect today if they aren't re-signed. So Nelson Aguilar was the first of that group of players to be re-signed. Now, the other dead cap hits aren't crazy. I would say Kevin Zeitler's at $4.3 million is the biggest dead cap hit out of that list. Nelson Aguilar's would have been one6 Gus Edwards is one8 Rocky Asin, $1.6 Geno Stone, 600000 So nothing severe, you know, if they don't get these deals done and we have to eat some of that dead cap money, it is what it is. It's not OBJ's $8 million or would have, what would have been $12 million. But regardless, we got Nelson Aguilar officially re-signed, so you can take his dead cap number off the table. We have him on the team. And hopefully Kevin Zeitler gets done today. I think that would be the one that hurts. And it's not that we can't re-sign him after today, but we would have to eat that four plus million dead cap and and re-sign him and take on a new cap number. So it becomes a lot more of a burden. If you're going to re-sign Kevin Zeitler, in my opinion, it should be done today. There's really no other way around it. I saw Jeff Zuri back in the comments saying that they're not very close on a deal, but deadline spur action and the deadline is today at four o'clock eastern so we'll see what happens I, I i'm holding out hope that kevin zeitler returns not only to keep our offensive line as talented as possible but also to avoid that dead cap hit and have him on the team i'd rather that be his cap number than just carry that number and he not be here but let's talk some mouse and aguilar because that is the official news you know the the rest of it is to be determined still but nelson aguilar finished last year 381 receiving yards four touchdowns those numbers aren't going to blow you away but he had a veteran presence in that Ravens receiving room and and locker room in general I felt like he was good with Lamar they had a good connection he was just a great depth piece you know and, it, and if we don't re-sign Odell and we don't draft a top receiver then Nelson could be even thrusted into a bigger role he could be that third receiver so I just like the signing regardless. I think it takes some pressure off of the receiving room, adding talent to the receiving room. Um, you know, whether they re-sign OBJ or not, I'm leaning towards them probably not re-signing him at this point. It just really depends on what that number is, though. If I knew what he would sign for, you know, a five to eight million dollar one year deal, or is he still looking for fifteen? You know, because he's not getting. I don't think the Ravens would pay him over ten. You know, we paid him a lot last year, but that was when Lamar's deal wasn't done. We kind of needed a proven veteran presence there. And OBJ can still ball. I'm not taking anything away from his ability. I feel like he can still show up, but he did battle injuries on and off throughout the year. And for whatever reason, just wasn't consistently targeted. So I don't know if 15 million is going to be worth it by any means. He's only getting older. And I think this Nelson Aguilar signing kind of takes pressure off of making a, a move like that you know it would suck to eat some dead cat money from Odell's contract but if you move on and get a guy in the second round of the draft or you know even the first round if you if there's a guy that that's worth it there I think I'm leaning towards Lyman and we'll do some uh, mock draft videos and talk about the draft as it gets closer and closer but 
regardless, if the Ravens draft a receiver higher in the draft, then they can obviously plug him in and use him often. If we draft one lower in the draft, I don't think he's going to replace Nelson Aguilar year one. So Nelson would probably have a bigger role. Who knows what goes on with Rashad Bateman. Zay Flowers, this investigation, we haven't even heard anything new. It's kind of fizzling. I'm going to guess that means that nothing's going to come of it, but we will see. So the Ravens have most of the pass catchers that Lamar was playing with last year besides Odell under contract for this year. So there's not going to be a lot of new faces, but they're probably still going to add a guy, whether that be Odell and we just run it back or the draft like we just talked about, or even free agency. I know we don't have a lot of extra money, but there's going to be a lot of moves made this offseason to clear some money. I think Marlon Humphrey and Ronnie Stanley are on the table to get restructured pretty soon and clear a bunch of money just because we don't have much. The Ravens aren't operating with much right now at all. I think it's around $7 million. I, There's so much going on, it's hard to tell exactly what the cap number is, but around $7 million, I mean... With a whole offseason ahead of you not <laughs> and a bunch of free agents, there's not much moves to be made. You can, you're not going to be able to make a lot of moves. So it's really how aggressive do you want to go. You can obviously add those void years onto a bunch of people, get a low year one cap hit, and re-sign some guys, add some talent, and just kind of go all in again. But that does mortgage your future. We're starting to experience some of that dead money come into play now. And the more you do that, the less of a future you have, period. And stay tuned today to see if anyone else is extended. I think Kevin Zeitler is the name to watch. And if it's going to happen, it's going to happen before 4 p.m. today just to avoid that dead cap hit. So we'll see what Eric DaCosta is going to do. The offseason feels like it's in full swing now for sure. Starting to re-sign some guys. Some deadlines are hitting. We got to make some decisions. The franchise deadline, the franchise tag deadline is coming up. Are we going to franchise tag Matt Abike? I think that's the only question with the franchise tag. I do not see us using it on Patrick Queen. I think the linebacker hits like over $20 million. It's just... It's not happening. You know, I'd love to keep Patrick Queen. I just don't see it happening. I, I do not. We just don't have anywhere near the amount of money to keep guys like that. But there's a lot going on. The ball started moving with Nelson Aguilar a little bit. So here we go. Offseason is in full swing. I'm ready. I can't wait. It's all refreshing to just rebuild this team and, and jump back into next year. I, I'm trying not to think about how it ended. But let me know what you guys think about the Nelson Aguilar re-signing. Let me know what you think about bringing back Zeitler and needing to do that today. And then uh, what are your dream free agents and moves that you would make in the coming weeks if you were Eric DaCosta? Just let me know in the comments. I always like interacting with you guys. And as always, I appreciate you tuning in to another episode of The Flock Rundown. Have a beautiful rest of your day. And I'll talk to you guys next time. Motionless brainwaves attempt to swim near where the sense can tame the untamed.